The DeLorean DMC-12 is the only model built by the DeLorean Motor Company, DMC. The coupe was manufactured in Northern Ireland from January 1981 to December 1982. The car became known especially through the film trilogy Back to the Future, in which it was converted into a time machine. Concept. John DeLorean said he wanted to build an ethical car, safe, durable and sustainable. Even as a General Motors, GM, executive, DeLorean believed that the future belonged to compact, high-quality vehicles with powerful, efficient engines and improved safety. Because the rest of management did not share this opinion, DeLorean increasingly went toe-to-toe -to -toe with his colleagues as vice president of GM, which ultimately led to him being given a choice, leave voluntarily or be fired. In order to save face, John DeLorean decided in May 1973 to resign from GM in order to set up his own business with the idea of a sports car under his own name, DMC, DeLorean Motor Company. The development of the technical concept in this early phase was in the hands of Bill Collins, a former engineer at Pontiac. Early on, DeLorean and Collins tried to implement their ideas of an ethical car by buying a safety concept from the All-Star insurance company and using it as the basis for the first prototype of the DMC-12, which was still called DSV, DeLorean Safety Vehicle. As early as 1975, John DeLorean decided to have the shape of his car designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro. The design was ready after only a few months. It was not a completely new design, because Giugiaro went back to a template intended for the Porsche 928, which had been rejected by Porsche. There was also already a very similar looking vehicle in the form of the Matra Laser. 1. The shape had been derived from Giugiaro's Maserati Medici study, a sensational piece of work that later influenced such diverse vehicles as the Maserati Quattro Porte 3 and the Audi Coupe Series 1. The design was also based on the Maserati Medici. The lightweight rear end with its thin struts was inspired by Giugiaro's designs for the Maserati's Bora and Merrick. Initial drawings from 1975 envisaged, at least as an alternative design, a 2 plus 2 seater version of the coupe. It was ultimately not realized, DeLorean stuck with the concept of the DMC-12 as a two seater. The idea of a four seater was revisited some time later in DeLorean's Medusa project. Prototypes. Giorgetto Giugiaro's Ital Design Company in Moncalieri near Turin was commissioned to design the DeLorean car in February 1975. In March 1975, Giorgetto Giugiaro showed his client John DeLorean and his chief engineer William T. Collins Jr. five different side views on a scale of 110 as well as some front views. In July 1975, barely six months after the contract was awarded, DeLorean and Collins saw the translucent Epowood model and approved it. Epo wood is an epoxy resin foam that can be worked with hand tools for woodworking. Its advantage over wood is that it has no fibers. The American company Car Craft then produced a first prototype, which was ready to drive in early 1977. The car still differed in detail, for example, in the position of the rearview mirrors and in the side windows, from the later production model, but apart from that it largely conformed to the specifications of Bill Collins and John DeLorean. It adopted many of the safety features of the all-star safety concept, so was equipped with airbags, among other things. Initial tests of a 3-liter V6 engine from Ford produced unsatisfactory results, and DeLorean resorted to a four-cylinder engine from Citroen. Thus, the first prototype received an engine and transmission from the Citroen CX, which produced 75 kilowatts, 102 horsepower. However, number 5 speed transmission was available for the Citroen engine, and the engine also proved too weak, so DeLorean considered turbocharging. Citroen rejected this, citing warranty claims, and withdrew as a possible engine supplier. In 1977, a second prototype was produced by Creative Industries. It had a 2.7-liter V6 engine from Peugeot, Renault, Volvo, the so-called PRV engine, or Europa engine which had already caught Bill Collins' eye in the Renault Alpine A310. The installation of this large, heavy engine meant that the entire rear half of the car had to be redesigned. A mid-engine car became a rear-engine design. Because progress on the project was slow and DeLorean was under increasing pressure from his investors to meet expectations, he decided, without consulting Bill Collins, to outsource further development of the car. In January 1979, the director of DeLorean Motor Cars Limited, which had been founded shortly before in Northern Ireland, Charles Bennington, and the purchasing manager Barry Wills visited the Ital Design Company. Giorgetto Giugiaro showed them his latest concept design, the Ace of Clubs. He pointed out that his four-year-old design was outdated and needed to be revised. 
He recommended that the sharp edges be rounded and various idiosyncrasies of the Ace of Clubs be incorporated. It was agreed that the right side of the car model should remain unchanged, while the left should be modified based on the recommended design changes. Bennington then only had to convince DeLorean to make the necessary changes. The revised model was presented to him in April 1979, and the revised design was approved so that it could go into production in 1980. Development at Lotus DeLorean set another two years for development up to actual market readiness and launch. So he approached Porsche and asked for the development to be ready for series production. Porsche, however, refused on the grounds that it would take at least five years for development work on the vehicle. The project was not seriously feasible in the time frame given by DeLorean. DeLorean, however, was under increasing pressure as a fully liable sole proprietor. He had to develop his hitherto immature concept into a marketable, attractive product. The only car manufacturer willing to finally take on the DSV in the allotted time was Colin Chapman and his British company Lotus. There, 200 employees worked at times in 1977 and 1978 to develop the DeLorean to production readiness. The previous technical development by Bill Collins was largely abandoned in the process. Collins himself gave up and quit at the beginning of 1979. Lotus developed a completely different chassis, which essentially corresponded to that of the Lotus Esprit. A central tubular frame forked at the front and rear and made of, non-stainless, sheet steel. The tines are connected at the ends by cross members. The tank sits in the triangles thus formed at the front, and the rear frame triangle accommodates the engine. The front wheels with rack and pinion steering are suspended on double wishbones, while a center link axle is fitted at the rear, i.e. the wheel carrier is supported on the frame by an angled forward cantilever and is guided laterally by two wishbones. What remained of DeLorean's idea was merely Jujaro's body shape, the gullwing doors and the stainless steel planked plastic body. The decision to adapt the technical backbone of the DeLorean to that of the Esprit is generally justified today by the short time Lotus had available for technical development, an independent design of the DeLorean chassis would hardly have been possible in less than two years. Lotus actually managed the near impossible and developed the new DeLorean in just two years. However, this also left little time to fix bugs and foreseeable teething problems with the car. As a result, the project was based even more closely on the Lotus Esprit. The vehicle that Lotus finally presented could hardly be considered a sports car in the true sense of the word. With a weight of around 1.3 t and 97 kilowatts, 132 horsepower, in the catalytic converter version, it was far behind the performance of competitor models such as the Corvette or Ferrari. For many potential customers, this was too little for such an expensive vehicle. The restrained temperament was due not least to the economically sensible but ultimately unfortunate decision in favor of the 2.8-liter PRV 6-cylinder, V-engine, with Renault transmission which had begun its long career in the large sedans from Peugeot, Renault and Volvo. With its streamlined body shape, the DMC-12 reached a top speed of 200 km per hour. Because of the laws in effect in the US at the time, the car speedometer Series production in January 1981, series production of the DMC-12 began at Dunmurry near Belfast in the British city of Northern Ireland. On January 21st of the same year, the first unit of the DeLorean rolled off the assembly line, 5. The new DMC plant was financed almost entirely by grants from the British government, which wanted to prevent further strengthening of the IRA by reducing the high unemployment rate in Northern Ireland. Prior to the start of production, two cars had been manufactured and test-driven for a total of only 60,000 miles to pass the US emissions test. However, this effort was too small to detect all possible defects and correct faults before the start of series production. That DeLorean nevertheless began production was due to growing pressure from its investors and dealers who, after six years of waiting, finally wanted to make money. Quality problems The production vehicles suffered from fluctuating product quality early on. Consistent gap dimensions could not be expected because the fiberglass pans that actually made up the car were produced with relatively large tolerances. The necessary manual adjustment and alignment of the trim panels was therefore not easy. Time and again, the gullwing doors also gave cause for complaint. Although they required unrivaled little space to open, they were above all too heavy. They were made of stainless steel and contained electric motors for the window regulators that only opened a tiny gap in the window surface, because the door was too rounded to allow the entire pane to sink into it. With the solenoid switches of the central locking system and the linkage of the door lock, the door mechanism was very difficult to adjust, which is why the gullwing doors often jammed or leaked after some time. 
Correctly adjusted doors with new gas struts, however, usually function properly. Conventional swing doors rely purely on gas struts. This requires the door to be lifted to open, and when closing, the doors can inflict painful injuries if they slip away from the passenger. In the DeLorean, therefore, a torsion spring was installed in addition to the gas strut so that the door swings open without external force when it is opened. The engine fan system, which was controlled by temperature sensors, was susceptible to overheating. Air conditioning systems that worked right off the bat were rare, although it has since been found that most original systems still do their job today if properly maintained and filled. Many car magazines were disappointed with the actual results of this daring and promising project. Thus, many scathing reviews followed, which permanently damaged the reputation of the DMC-12 even among potential customers. Sales problems, decline of the company. At the latest when DeLorean doubled production of the DMC-12 in 1981 in order to look like a successful businessman at the planned IPO of the new parent company DMH, DeLorean Motor Holding, the project began to collapse, because demand was already lower than production. Several hundred DMC-12s were sitting on stockpiles in Belfast. When the British government refused to inject further money into the venture, and DeLorean was arrested while trying to obtain additional capital through a cocaine deal, the DMC went bankrupt. DeLorean had run afoul of an agent of the US Drug Enforcement Administration, DIA, in the deal, and while he was acquitted in court in the US for their involvement, he would have faced embezzlement proceedings in the UK, which would have landed him in prison there. Together with Colin Chapman, he had embezzled 17.5 million US dollars of investors' money, which he had invested in other ventures and his lavish lifestyle. Since Chapman died in December 1982, he could not be charged. However, his chief financial officer, Fred Bushell, went to prison for three years for complicity in the crime. Because DeLorean stubbornly refused, after DMC's insolvency, to transfer to it at least the worldwide distribution rights for its sports car, which it had secured from the outset, so that it could continue to exist in a small volume with a new investor, it finally had to be liquidated, causing 2,500 employees to lose their jobs. After the Dunmurry factory closed, all the metal parts of the fabrication equipment, including the press tools, were auctioned off to the highest bidder. Some of it went to a scrap dealer, who sold the pressing tools used to make the left front fender and the right rear side panel to a fishing company. The latter used these off the Irish coast in the Atlantic as ballast for the nets of their fish farms. Consequently, these two body parts are extremely rare today and correspondingly expensive. A large part of the bankruptcy estate was bought at auction by former employees, who from then on were concerned with maintaining the vehicles and supplying spare parts. Subsequent production and special vehicles. A few more examples of the DMC-12 were assembled at the end of 1982 from the vehicle parts produced up to that time. These vehicles are also referred to as 1983 models. Ironically, shortly after the arrest of the company's founder, the DMC-12 suddenly experienced enormous popularity. A run on the remaining vehicles began, briefly driving sales prices to over $50,000. For Christmas 1981, two vehicles were produced on behalf of the credit card company American Express, which were electroplated with gold. On Christmas Eve 1982, the last vehicle was assembled from the remaining gold-plated parts. One door, however, had to be subsequently gold-plated and can still be recognized today by its different hue. All three cars are in the US. One is in the National Automobile Museum in Reno, VIN 4300, brown interior, 5-speed transmission. The second is in the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, VIN 4301, black interior, automatic transmission, also known as the car from the bank in Snyder, Texas, and the last one built is privately owned in Maryland. VIN 20105, brown interior, automatic transmission. There are rumors of a fourth example being gold-plated by a private owner. The DMC-12s were not painted, as the exterior was unpainted stainless steel. Of the approximately 9,000 built, there were still about 6,500 worldwide in 2015.